Seabrook received as a sentence, Norman Seabrook, 58 months um, in jail or in prison, three years, and after he gets out, three years supervised release. Um, he is responsible to repay the $19 million that is still lost. And he has to pay 2500 on this $19 million in 60 days. Seabrook got sentenced to 58 months. The prosecution wanted 63 months. The lower, le the, the, the minimum that he could have gotten, or the statute says, is 53 months. Okay? Now, the judge made it clear that he could go lower than that if he wanted to. He had the discretion to go lower than 53 months, or he can go higher than 63 months. Um, as we know, he got. Seabrook got convicted of two counts, and they ran both of these counts concurrently. So there's one sentence that he gets that covers both charges. Um, he got 58 months, which is like in the middle of 53 and 63. The, the prosecution one is 63, okay? So he got 58 months. He has three years supervised release once he is released from prison after three years. Um, he has $19 million, he has a $19 million restitution now. This was a very um, contentious point in the hearing or the sentencing. The defense, C. Brooks's lawyer, made it clear that he felt that Seabrook should not be held responsible for the $19 million. His rationale is that Seabrook made an investment. Every investment has risk. Every mutual fund or whatever you, whatever money vehicle that you are investing in comes with a prospectus and this prospectus tells you that you can lose your principal. So his argument was that Seabrook made the investment and the investment failed and they lost everything, but he did it as he would do any investment. And the judge's response was, the bribery had a lot to do with the investment had everything to do with the investment. Had there not been a bribe, there would have been no investment. So he's saying like, even if the investment would have paid off and everything would have went well, the um, reason why this investment was made was because of the bribe. And the judge is operating on the, the, the termination of the jury. The jury said that the, the bribe did happen. So he has to operate under that um, fact, that, that decision. So he's saying that there would have been no investment. And then he started pointing to the risk involved in the investment and the unusual investment that it was. And, had, and no other municipal union had ever invested in these types of um, high risk funds. And the risk was unusual. It wasn't like the normal risk that anybody, you know, that's managing these types of funds or any types of funds would take lightly. You know, um, he pointed out that this fund was based in the Cayman Islands and they also had a corporate shield that makes it very difficult are the, the odds of, of, of collecting if there's any type, types of fraud or any types of mismanagement are very slim, you know? And this is just the nature of this type of investment. And, it, what, and what also struck me about the um, investment that Seabrook did was um, there were other options if he wanted to invest with platinum partners and in a hedge fund there were options where they had 
another hedge fund, I believe, that was based in the United States that he could have invested in, but he chose to invest in the one that's from the Cayman Islands, which offers less um, protection for the funds than the one from the United States. Because the United States, if you do business here, you have to be subject to certain rules. If you do business in the Cayman Islands, there's less rules, and then they have the corporate shield where you can't go after the individuals um, if the money is lost due to mismanagement or fraud or anything like that. So the judge pointed out all of this, and he's saying that the reason why this deal was made was because of the bribe. The bribe was the main reason reason why the meetings were set up, um, the money was invested, the money was moved, and things like that. Let's get back to the 19 million. So for that reason that Seabrook was the driving force behind this investment and this investment is very um, risky and it has been established that he did accept the bribe for the investment. The judge said that he is liable for the $19 million, that he has to pay restitution to $19 million. Now, um, and he went as far as to say that he has to pay 2500 on that $19 million in 60 days. Um, it started out at 10000 The judge asked him to pay 10000 His judge, I mean, his, his lawyer, he told his lawyer, judge, um, Seabrook told his lawyer that he didn't have 10000 He said, you know, he doesn't have 10000 So the um, judge said, well, what do you have? You know, can you do 5000 in 60 days? And then Seabrook and the lawyer consulted and the lawyer said that um, he would have to borrow the 5000 you know, to, to pay in 60 days. So the judge said, well, what about 2500 And they said, okay, 2500 So he has to put 2500 on this $19 million in um, 60 days. And the way I understand it, he's going to have to pay a percentage of his um, earnings, if he ever earns any money um, in the future towards this 19 million. I think it's 10% of his salary or something like that. Don't quote me on that. Um, I guess for the rest of his life. And the amount 19 million will most likely be split three ways uh, with Jonah Resnick and um, Huberfeld. So each of them will have to pay a third, but that hasn't been established yet because Huberfeld and um, Resnick, they're not, their cases haven't been completed yet. So, but the, the, they, they're anticipating that Norman will be liable for a third of the um, $19 million, which, still, which is still a whole lot of money. So that was a very contentious point. They fought back and forth, but the judge was firm on that, that Seabrook is liable for the $19 million. All right. Um, there was testimony in this case. Um, the lawyer for Seabrook, before the sentencing, he read letters from officers that um, supported Seabrook. They felt that um, Seabrook had done a lot and that he should receive leniency. And they talked about the humble beginnings of Seabrook's life. You know, he was um, born in a poor family from the Bronx, and you know, I think he has, is from a single mother, he had, he had um, you know, a challenging upbringing. And um, one thing that stood out to me, which probably will sum everything up, they said that they were so poor they didn't have a Christmas tree. So his mother would hang lights in the shape of a Christmas tree on the wall for Christmas. So this, these are the humble beginnings that Seabrook has come from. And he was able to um, get out of that situation. His mother was able to raise him in such a way that he was able to be successful. Um, and um, not only bring himself out of 
his poverty, but help bring others too. He's done a lot of work. He's done a lot of good work. Um, and I don't want to overlook that. Now, like I said, they read statements from officers that were in support of Seabrook, and they had three people come forth that um, were the victims of Seabrook and express that, and that they wanted to see him get the maximum. Um, and they went into what Seabrook had done to them and how it affected them personally, financially, and things of that nature. So um, I'm not going to get into that. Um, if those officers want to contact me and do a video or anything like that, um, talking about their plight, um, I would be happy to interview them and you know put, make the video public. Um, but until then, you know, I don't really want to get into that because you know it's a lot of things that um, details that I don't want to get into right now. But they spoke. And after they spoke, like I said, the bottom line was he got what he got, 58 months. And um, he's out on bail. And they're, they're going to decide whether they're going to let him remain out until his appeal goes through, and which would be like about a year and a half, or they're going to require that he um, surrender to the federal prison system. So they're going to do briefs about that, and I guess next week they'll know whether or not they're going to do it or not. There's certain things that um, are required for a person to have bail. They went through the points um, that um, Seabrook was, would be judged on, on whether or not he could receive bail. One of the points was whether the person was a flight risk. The judge checked that off like, you know, he's not a flight risk. Um, the other was whether he has the whether he will commit the crime again, you know, that's one of the reasons why they don't give you bail because you're a flight risk. Or they think you're gonna do another crime or commit the same crime. And they said that, you know, he won't commit the same crime again. He probably won't, he won't be in a position to commit the same crime in, in the next you know, year and a half or whatever. So he checked that off. And um, the other, one of, one of the other things that they talked about was um, whether or not his appeal seems like it would change anything, whether he will win on his appeal or not. And that was the, the, that was the um, contentious point. And this is why they haven't decided it yet, because um, the judge kind of feels he really doesn't have a lot of merit on his side that may overturn this case. Whereas, of course, the the defense says, yeah, well, we have some things that we are going to bring up in appeal that may change things. So they're going to look at all the material and all the briefs and they're going to decide whether or not he should um, have bail. And Norman also got a chance to speak and he said that he's innocent. He said that um, the um, bag that they say, the Ferragamo bag that they found in his house had, had cigars. It was a gift. And he didn't get any money, you know. Um, and I know some of you feel that like that's the case. Um, but the judge kind of talked about this. And I'm sure he sees these types of cases all the time. Um, he's, he's been on the bench for a long time. This judge is like in his 70s. And um, he was saying that um, people that, that get caught up in this type of crime, are usually people who have done a lot for other people. People who have, have, who have great stories, who have humble beginnings and things like that and have done a whole lot with their lives. And then it gets to the point where they feel that they want more. They feel like they deserve more. They feel like they're entitled. Now, one of the reasons why he got 58 months and didn't get 20 months, so whatever people may think he should have gotten, is because the judge said that people that hold the trust of others have to be held accountable, because if you don't um, hold them accountable, then other people will do it. Other, this is like a um, deterrent, this, his sentence is a deterrent 
for other people who um, may be trusted with money or whatever, that they take that trust very seriously and don't violate that trust. And, um, but like the judge said, it has to serve as a deterrent. And one other thing that was brought out in this case um, by one of the persons that testified, um, one of the victims that testified, he said that the executive board um, knew what was happening and they were intimidated by Seabrook, but they had a responsibility to report corruption and, they, and he referenced um, Mayor's Executive Order 16, which we all know about. And yeah, you're supposed to report any type of corruption. So if someone is um, spending money and transferring money, that's probably corruption and that should have been reported. So, you know, just keep that in mind too, because I don't know how this is gonna play out. They may start bringing in the rest of the executive board, I don't know. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for su your support. Those of you who have bought the items has really have really supported the, the program and allowed me to cover this. And like I said, I'll be covering this again if it goes any further. So until the next time, as always, peace and stay safe.